Okay. I think we are ready. Can you hear me, Rakesh? Oh, yes, Jason. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think we can start. Okay, welcome again to the sixth background lecture of our ISSD course. So we will have two research sessions by the next week, including this one, uh, where we cover our group's recent research on storage systems. Today, I will cover two recent works for improving the read performance and privacy of modern land of space based SSDs. So this is the outline of today's lecture. I will first recap some background on NAND flash based SSDs we already covered in previous lectures. Then I will introduce our two recent works, one to improve SSD read latency and the other to efficiently delete the security sensitive data from the NAND flash memory. Okay, let's get started. A NAND flash based SSD itself is quite a complicated embedded system that contains multiple cores, hardware controllers, low power DRAM, and NAND flash chips. The main reason for such high complexity is that NAND flash memory has various unique characteristics, such as erase before write property, limited endurance, and hard, high error rates, which do not exist in traditional hard disk drives. So in the SSD controller, Sophisticated system software runs on multiple embedded cores uh, while interacting various hardware controllers to provide backward compatibility with hard disk drives and hide the unique characteristics of NAND flash memory. To recap the unique characteristics of NAND flash memory, uh, let me start from some fundamental basics of NAND flash memory. A flash cell stores data using its threshold voltage level, which is dictated uh, by the amount of electrons or charge in the cell. It means that a flash cell can change its threshold voltage or charge level in a non-volatile manner. Programming a cell increases the cell's threshold voltage level, while erasing a cell decreases the cell's threshold voltage level. So a flash cell encodes data using these different threshold voltage states. So for example, uh, we can read a cell as one if its threshold voltage is lower than the reference voltage level, and otherwise it would read as zero. If we make only two threshold voltage states, a cell can store only a single bit. But with more precise threshold voltage control and more reference voltage levels, we can store multiple bits in a single cell, which is called a multi-level cell technique. And unfortunately, a flash cell leaks its electrons over time, which is commonly called the retention loss. In this example, uh, we can still read the correct data from a cell after one year retention time, uh, zero one here, because the cell's charge level is still higher than the reference voltage level, right? However, a very long retention time, two years in total in this example, can decrease the cell threshold voltage to be lower than the reference voltage level, which in turn introduces a retention error. Finally, a flash cell has a limited lifetime, meaning that it cannot reliably store the data after experiencing a certain number of program and ERA cycles or PE cycles in short. For example, uh, at a 1K P cycle, a one-year retention would unlikely introduce a bit error, but at 10K P cycle, uh, the same amount of retention time would very likely cause a bit error. Okay, now let me recap the NAND flash organization. A core operating principle of NAND flash memory is that a large number of flash cells operate in parallel. So a single road line controls more than 100,000 flash cells, meaning such a large number of cells in the same road lines are read and programmed at the same time. And more than hundreds of road lines comprise a NAND flash block, and all the cells in the same block are concurrently erased. And this design increases the operation latency of NAND flash memory for sure, but also enables the significantly high operation bandwidth of NAND flash memory because the latency increases sublinearly with the number of cells operating in parallel. But another problem is that because of this, NAND flash memory cannot efficiently support overwrites to a program the word line. Uh, meaning that we needed to first erase the entire block before writing any new data, uh, which is called the erase before write property. 
for sure, we can issue a program command or program the word line because NAND flash is just a passive memory device. But in most cases, doing so cannot store the correct data. Uh, this is because it is impossible to override a zero cell uh, to be a one cell. For example, the second cell uh, in word line uh, as a uh, Making this cell to be one cell requires to decrease the cell threshold voltage level. But as we discussed, the program operation can only increase uh, the target cell threshold voltage level. So to update the second cell in this case to store bit data one, we need to erase the cell, which requires to erase all the cells in the block. Usually we describe an end flash block to have multiple pages. Uh, where each bit of a page is stored in one cell of the corresponding word line. And if we store uh, three bit, if we store three bits in a, a single flash cell, meaning that a word line stores the three pages, which we call triple level cell or TLC in end flash memory, we can increase the number of pages per block without changing the cell array. Okay, I think I covered every necessary background now. Okay, do you have any questions so far? Okay, hope everything is clear. So now let's dive into the first work uh, entitled Reducing Solid State Drive Read Latency by Optimizing Read Retry, which was presented in ASPOS last year. Okay, this all tackles the long and non deterministic or unpredictable read latency of modern NAND flash based SSDs. Ideally, for reading four kilobyte data uh, from an SSD, we usually expect its latency to be around 100 microseconds. But in reality, it often takes more than one millisecond, which significantly degrades the quality of service of read intensive latency sensitive applications. So what is going inside the SSD? In fact, there can be many possible reasons for this latency fluctuation, but one key reason is an internal process of modern SSDs called a read retry. For an incoming host to request the SSD firmware, which is commonly called the flash translation layer or FTL in short, it sends a read request uh, to the target chip through the flash controller. The problem is that sometimes uh, the SSD retries the same read command again and again, uh, which increases the read latency linearly with, linearly with the number of read retries. Then why does the read retry happen? In fact, read retry is, is essential to guaranteeing data reliability of modern NAND flash based SSDs. So this shows uh, the threshold voltage distribution of a page. For a recap, uh, the x-axis indicates a cell's threshold voltage level, and the y-axis indicates the number of cells that have a certain threshold voltage level. So for example, a coordinate x, y uh, means that the page has y cells whose threshold voltage level is x volt. Okay, And why do you use such a distribution? Uh, as we discussed, the flash cell stores data using its threshold voltage or charge level. So if a cell's threshold voltage is lower than the reference, it reads as a one, and otherwise it's zero, right? But as discussed, the NAND flash memory uh, reads and writes data uh, in page granularity, and it is practically impossible to make all the cells in a page have the same threshold voltage levels, uh, since the physical characteristics such as cell size uh, significantly vary across the cells due to process variations. So a page's program status is commonly described as a distribution like this. The problem is that in NAND flash memory for various reasons, such as retention loss and program interference, the program the threshold voltage states uh, shift and widen. Uh, if a threshold voltage stays a shift beyond the reference voltage level, for example, here, see this red area, uh, reading the page incurs error as the cells in this area would read as one, uh, which should be zero, actually. To avoid such errors, it is common practice in modern SSDs to use error correcting codes or ECC in short, which basically stores some redundant data called the ECC parity along with the original data in order to use the redundant data for error correction. 
Typically, the ACC engine exists in flash controller, meaning outside of chip. Uh, and when the SS controller issues a read request, for example, to page zero in this figure, the flash controller issues a NAND flash command with the page address, and then the sensor data is transferred to, from uh, the chip to the flash controller. And finally, the ECC engine decodes the transfer data, uh, trying to correct all the Robit errors in the red page. Unfortunately, modern NAND flash memory exhibits a very high Robi data rates due to the multi-level cell technique. So this is the threshold voltage distribution of a single level cell page. And this is for a triple level cell page where a single cell stored the three bits using eight different threshold voltage states. And as you can see here, the TLC technique decreases, significantly decreases the margin between two adjacent to threshold voltage states. It means that smaller, uh, very small, even very small threshold voltage shift can cause a bit errors uh, much more easily, right? <clears throat> and due to this high robit error rate, uh, modern NAND flash based SSDs commonly adopt a very strong ECC, for example, which can correct uh, up to eight bit errors per one kilobyte data. But this is not scalable at all, as the stronger the ECC, the higher the latency, power, and area overheads. It means that we cannot increase the SSD's error correcting capability or ECC capability without limitation. So in modern NAND flash based SSDs, actually it frequently happens that a read incurs a more bit errors than the ECC capability, which in turn causes a data loss if there is no countermeasure. To address this problem, modern SSDs commonly adopt to read retry, which basically reads the pages again with the adjacent uh, read reference voltage value. And as shown in this figure, uh, using properly adjusted read reference voltage values significantly decrease the shift to the area beyond the reference, these red areas, uh, meaning the number of robot errors in reading the page. So basically, the goal of a read retry step is to find a near optimal read reference voltage that would reduce uh, the number of robit errors to be lower than the ECC capability. Unfortunately, read retry also significantly increases the read latency. And as we discussed, the reading a page consists of three steps, uh, page sensing at the chip, uh, data transfer from the chip to the flash controller, and ECC decoding at the flash controller. So if the number of bit adders uh, is lower than the ECC correction capability, the read request can be returned immediately after ECC decoding. However, when the number of raw bit adders uh, is higher than the ECC capability, the flash controller performs a multiple read retry step until it reduces the number of bit adders to be lower than the ECC capability. And this in turn increases the read latency almost linearly with the number of retry steps. Okay, now let me introduce our key ideas to reduce the read retry latency. Our first observation is that in common case, once a read fails, uh, multiple read retry steps are required for correctly reading the page. So our first key idea, which we call pipeline the read retry or PR square in short, is that Instead of waiting uh, for the ECC decoding of each retry step, uh, it starts the next step as soon as the sensing operation at the chip is finished, speculating that the next retry step would be likely needed. And this idea is very simple, but can significantly reduce uh, the read retry latency uh, by removing the data transfer and ECC decoding from the critical path, uh, which actually contribute to almost 30% of the latency of each retry step. Okay, now let me introduce our second technique uh, called the adaptive read retry or AR scary in short. Our another key observation is that when read write eventually succeeds, uh, there always exists, or exists a large ECC margin in the final retry step due to the use of a near optimal read reference voltage. In this figure, for example, there are only 23 bit adders in the final retry step, while the ECC can correct up to 72 bit adders. And we think, uh, can we leverage this reliable margin to reduce the read retry latency? And the answer is yes, for sure. Uh, so the key idea of AR scare is to trade 
the large ECC margin in the final retry step for reducing read timing parameters, meaning the read latency for each retry step, which can further reduce the read retry latency on top of a PR scale. You may notice that the sensing latency of each retry step is significantly reduced compared to regular read at the cost of increasing Roby data. So here E1, E2, and EI uh, indicates the additional bit errors uh, that caused by the reducing, uh, reducing the read time parameters. Uh, here, I would like to emphasize that uh, ARScale reduces the sensing latency of every retry step while ensuring that this reduction would not cause uh, the number of Roby errors in the final retry step to exceed the uh, capability, meaning that uh, reducing this timing parameters uh, should ensure that uh, the final retry steps uh, robit error rate uh, is below uh, the ECC capability. This is really important uh, because otherwise, AR scare would rather increase the read retry latency by causing additional read retry steps. And here, uh, we only care about the final retry steps. Uh, as the other previous step here uh, would fail anyways, even if we did not reduce, uh, meaning that if we uh, used the regular read timing parameters. Okay, we validate the feasibility of AR scares, uh, AR scare using 160 real TLC and the flash chips. And we observe a large ECC margin in the final retry step, uh, even under worst case, worst case operating conditions uh, due to the use of a uh, near optimal read reference voltage. And there is also a large reliability margin that manufacturers incorporate into uh, read timing parameters, considering worst case operating scenarios. So we conclude that AR scare can easily work in commodity NAND flash chips, uh, enabling at least 25% uh, reduction of the page sensing latency for every retry step. <clears throat> okay, let me read you the over design of our P and A are scared. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> we first propose SSD manufacturers uh, to incorporate a read timing parameter table in their SSD so that the SSD firmware can get the best read timing parameters depending on the current operating conditions, such as the PE cycles and retention time. So when a read failure occurs, uh, the flash controller notifies it to the SSD firmware, and, the, and then the SSD firmware queries the table uh, with the current operating conditions uh, to send the best timing parameters to the flash controller. Uh, the flash controller performs a read retry with the reduced timing parameters, meaning that it uses a AR scare while speculating, uh, speculatively starting the next retry step uh, meaning that it also uses a PR scale until the ECC decoding succeeds. Finally, uh, the flash controller sends the correct page data to the user through the SSD controller. Okay, so the key takeaway uh, here, which I think quite interesting, is that modern SSDs employ strong ECC to avoid the read retry as much as possible because yeah, its performance penalty is so significant but it is impossible to completely avoid the read retry. But once read retry occurs again, uh, the strong ECC can also provide a high reliability margin uh, that can be used uh, to reduce the read retry latency. Okay, for our system level evaluation, we use a state of the art SSD simulator called MQSIM and 12 real world workers. And our results show that our proposal improves SSD response time by up to 51% compared to a high-end SSD that has no read retry mitigation, and by up to 32% compared to a state-of-the-art read retry uh, mitigation technique. Okay, uh, so any questions so far? Okay, so let me inter then, then let me move on to the next work uh, to support efficient data sanitization in modern NAND flash based SSDs. Okay, here is a full title of the paper, and it was presented in ASPLOS 2020. And this work tackles the data remnants problem uh, where even when the user deletes uh, stored data, the data can remain inside the SSD for indefinite time. And 
So this shows a brief description, a very brief description of a NAND flash based SSD, a storage system, okay? Because we are also describing uh, the file system also. Okay, suppose that the user updates the file A by overriding A1 prime. Okay, and as we discussed, NAND flash memory does not support overwrite. So common SSDs always perform out of place updates, leaving the old data A1 intact. It just mark uh, a, the original data A1 uh, as invalid. And let's assume that the user writes another file to the SSD and deletes it very soon. Uh, then the SSD does not erase the related pages immediately while just marking them as invalid also. So then the question is, when would such pages be erased, right? And the answer is that a page is physically erased only in garbage collection that is triggered only when the SSD is running out of free pages. It means that if the user does not write any data for a long time after this, uh, the, the, the invalid data, invalid pages uh, remain in the SSD indefinitely. And this is the fundamental source of data recovery attacks that aim to disclose private data which has been already deleted or updated by the user. So since the user explicitly updated and deleted the data from the file system, the system must guarantee that the data is inaccessible, right? However, if an adversary can detach the SSD from the system and disolder uh, the chips from the SSD, then the adversary can directly access the chips with the custom flash controller to get all the invalid data uh, remaining in the chips. So, and finally, by using existing forensic tools, the adversary can easily uh, completely recover all the versions of updated or deleted files. The most intuitive way, for sure, to prevent such data recovery attacks is to immediately erase an invalid page. However, as we discussed, uh, the eraser unit of NAND flash memory is a block which contains more than a thousand of pages these days. So to erase a target page, we should first move all the valid pages in the corresponding block to another free block, which causes a significant performance overhead, especially when the target block has many valid pages. Also, if the target block has some free pages, they should be also erased without programmed which wastes uh, PE cycles. So in conclusion, uh, immediate block erasure is hard to use in practice due to its prohibitive performance and lifetime overheads. To address this, a prior work proposed a data sanitization technique called scrubbing. The key idea of scrubbing is to reprogram all the flash cells that store an invalid page. It means that instead of erasing, us, erasing all the cells, Scrubbing reprograms all the cells to be zero cells. So overriding is impossible for sure in NAND flash memory as discussed in most cases, uh, because uh, program operations can only increase at the cells threshold voltage, but making all the cells to be zero cells is certainly possible, right? And like this, uh, scrubbing uh, can destroy uh, the page data without like erasure. So uh, when this technique was first proposed, more than a decade ago, uh, the problem seemed to solved. However, scrubbing is also hard to use in modern NAND flash uh, memory uh, due to two reasons. The first problem is that modern NAND flash memory stores uh, multiple pages in a single road line using MLC techniques. So in this example, actually page one can be stored in a word line zero, not word line one, uh, along with the page zero and two. Right? And uh, uh, if we assume the TLC technology. And in this case, reprogramming all the cells to the highest voltage, highest threshold voltage states would destroy and not only the target pages data, page zero's data, but also the other pages uh, data uh, that share the word line, right? It means that in MS NAND flash memory, scrubbing also requires a copy operation uh, to avoid data loss for the other uh, value pages in the same word line. And even if we can somehow afford the copy overhead because the number of uh, copy operation required uh, is relatively smaller the immediate uh, compared to the immediate black erasure, but scrubbing has another reliability issue in modern NAND flash memory. 
due to program interference uh, to the adjacent waterline. It means that reprogramming the target waterline slightly programs the adjacent waterline, which is called the program interference. And it creates the number of Robit errors in the adjacent pages in modern NAND flash based uh, in modern NAND flash memory. So, in conclusion, existing solutions that physically destroy data uh, incur performance significant performance lifetime and reliability problems in modern NAND flash memory. Okay, let me introduce our key idea called the Evanesco. So our key idea is to allow a NAND flash chip to be aware of the validity of each page so that the chip itself can avoid access to invalid pages. So the key point is uh, Evanesco does not touch flash cells that store user data, so it can avoid copying valid pages and affecting the reliability of stored data. So to this end, we propose two new NAND flash commands page lock and block lock, or P lock and B lock in short, respectively. So to sanitize a page, the SSD firmware sends a P lock command that disables the page's access and function flag inside the NAND flash chip. And if a block needs to be sanitized, uh, the B lock command disables all the pages in the block. And even if an adversary directly access the raw flash chip, the chip just returns dummy data, let's say all zero data, for, an, for any access to an invalid page. So there are two design requirements for Evanesco. Uh, first, the chip must keep the per chip access permission flags in a non-volatile manner. And we, we needed to put, and also we needed to put the access control logic inside the NAND flash chip as the other system components like flash controllers and uh, FTL can be compromised also by uh, adversaries as we discussed, right? So the key challenge here is that we need to make the area uh, overhead minimal uh, as a high chip density is the paramount requirement in modern NAND flash memory. So let me introduce how our PLOC uh, can meet these requirements. And in our paper, actually, we also propose BLOC, uh, but a high level idea is quite similar. Uh, so I will skip BLOC in this presentation, but I would encourage you reading the full paper if you are interested. So to keep the, so the first challenge is uh, on chip access function flag at low cost. So to keep the per page access function flags, we use the spare cells in each world line. So in addition to the cells to store the user data, a word line has also spare cells to store page-related data, uh, page-related metadata, uh, like ECC parity, as we discussed, right? Sorry. And we use a, a sum of these spare cells to store each page's access permission, permission flag. So the access permission flag cells are initially erased when the page is first programmed and PLOC uh, programs only the target page's uh, access permission flag, okay? And uh, as it does not uh, program any data cell uh, here, it has little interference impact on stored data. For sure, uh, there would be some interference between flag cells, right? But it is not a problem because if we use the flag cells as a single level cell, uh, to store only one bit data, meaning enabled or disabled. And SLC cells uh, are significantly more robust to the program interference compared to MLC cells. Okay, now we have a low cost on chip access function flag using spare cells. So the remaining problem is to implement on chip access control logic at low cost. And we address this by uh, slightly changing the data path of NAND flash memory. So in NAND flash memory, the stored data is first read uh, to the page buffer through the bin lines and transferred uh, out of the chip byte by byte throughout the data out circuit tree. We slightly change this data path by adding multiplexer and bridge transistor, which changes the connectivity between the page buffer and data out circuit tree depending on the read pages access permission flag. So in this example, the target page's access of function flag here is disabled, meaning it, its cell value is zero, which disables uh, the bridge transistor and thus disconnects 
the page buffer from the data or circuitry. So reading the page always returns uh, all zero data regardless of actual values uh, of stored data in page buffer, right? So, and we validated the reliability of Evanesco via real device characterization of 160TLC in the place chips. And our results uh, show that Evanesco does not compromise the reliability of NAND flash memory if we set the latency of a P-lock and B-lock to be 100 microseconds and 300 microseconds, respectively. Yeah, please see the uh, full paper for our detailed design space uh, explanation. So, <clears throat> Evanesco enables uh, efficient data synthesization uh, without any copy operations and reliability issues uh, via minimal changes to commodity NAND flash chips. However, the performance of RAID uh, is still not negligible as the P-log and B-log latency uh, is uh, as long as uh, the read, uh, typical read late, page read latency, like 100 microseconds, let's say. So to address this, we also propose a secure SSD, an Evanesco-enabled SSD that minimizes the performance overhead of a data sanitization in two ways. So first, the lock manager uh, inside the secure SSD issues PLOP and BLOP commands depending on the target block's status. So if the target block has many valid pages, it issues a PLOP command for each individual pages to, uh, to, to sanitize. However, if the target block has no other valid page but only invalid pages, uh, so only pages to invalidate, it issues a BLOP command to sanitize multiple pages at once. The second optimization is cross-layer interactions for a selective data sanitization. And we envision a system where the user application can inform the SSD of each data as a security level through the file system. For example, when the user writes a security sensitive file, the application sends the information to the SSD so that the SSD keeps, can keep track of the security level of related pages. So when the user deletes the security insensitive file, uh, the, SS, the SSD performs neither PLOP nor BLOP operations, uh, avoiding performance overhead due to unnecessary sanitization. Okay, for evaluation, we compare the performance of a secure SSD against the two SSDs, ERSSD and uh, SCRSSD, uh, which perform immediate block erasure and scrubbing, respectively, whenever a page is invalidated. And we normalized uh, the performance of three SSDs uh, to an unmodified SSD that does not support any data sanitization and thus has no performance and lifetime overheads. As the graph shows, the secure SSD provides a comparable performance with an unmodified SSD, while existing solutions significantly degrade SSD performance due to a large amount of copy operations for valid pages. So secure SSD significantly reduces the performance overhead of a data sanitization. We also measure the right amplification write amplification factor of each SSD ensured to WAF value compared to compare the lifetime overhead. Basically, WAF uh, indicates how many page writes the SSD needs to perform for uh, servicing uh, the same amount of host writes. So the lower the WAF value, the longer the lifetime of the SSD. And in YSS, we also normalized uh, the WAF value uh, I'm sorry about this. So something wrong in this figure, but yeah. <laughs> so this is one, two, three, four, five. So sorry about this mistake. And as you can see, existing techniques uh, significantly uh, increases the number of written pages, uh, the WAF values for, uh, in order to copy the also uh, while copying the associated value pages. In contrast, as secure SSD does not introduce any additional copy operation, it can provide the same lifetime as an unmodified SSD. Okay, let me conclude today's lecture with a summary of contributions. So the first work tackles the long and undeterministic SSD read latency due to an essential reliability management scheme in modern SSDs called the read retry which can significantly degrade the performance of a data intensive application. 
So we propose a pipeline and adaptive read retry that reduces uh, read retry latency by leveraging read retry characteristics of NAND flash memory and ECC margin existing in modern SSDs. The second work tackles the data remanence problem in NAND flash based SSDs, uh, where obsolete data can remain intact in the SSD for an indefinite time. So while existing techniques that physically destroy uh, stored data exhibit a prohibitive performance and lifetime overheads, our solution can efficiently support the data sanitization with minimal overheads by avoiding transfer of the obsolete data from NAND flash chips using existing spare cells and simple watch. Okay, so this is all uh, uh, for, uh, this is all that I have prepared for today's lecture. And do you have any question? Okay, cool. Hope everything is clear. Okay, cool. So thank you for attending and we will have two research sessions by the next week. Uh, so meaning, so in this, uh, uh, so we will have uh, uh, another uh, research session uh, on next Friday, uh, where we will cover a very exciting work. Uh, one is for uh, in storage processing to accelerate and improve energy efficiency of genomics applications, and uh, the other uh, to efficiently manage a hybrid storage system uh, by reinforcement learning. So. Please stay tuned and I hope you can uh, enjoy uh, the next week's presentation also. Thank you very much and take care. I'll see you next week.